Hello traders. In this video, we'll cover the indices, all of which moved higher last week, and we'll cover the stocks with the best probabilities of following through this week as breath starts to improve. This week, we'll cover the improvement in breadth, the positive closes in all of the major U.S. indices, and the leaders that look set up to follow through on Monday. Bond stock ratio is neutral. Most of our indicators are bullish at 10, with 6 neutral and 4 bearish. Sectors are improving, with those that have the most promise in green, in addition to strength in international markets. S&P starts out the week with support at 4,000, resistance is at the call wall at 4,150, and many of the stocks that we have listed look set up for continuation. Bottom line, we'll be looking for institutions to give us direction on Monday. We did see the S&P 500 improve, RSI is above 50 and rising, showing strength of trend. We hit the 9 EMA and bounced on Friday. With all of the moving averages turned up and to the right, 9, 21 day, 50, 200 day are all turning up. And we do see MACD above its signal line. It's starting to show signs of a peak and stochastics is a bit embedded, turning down. So we'll have to watch Monday how the markets open. That said, we did see the FANG stocks, all of the leaders, the generals, if you will, Bounced on Friday as well, produced a hanging man or hammer. RSI is above 50, that's showing strength of trend. And all of the moving averages are turned up and to the right. MACD is flattening out, but it's still above zero, and stochastics is just below 80. With the FANG index only 15 stocks, we are looking for the NASDAQ 100 to continue, which produced a bullish engulfing candle on Friday held above the 9 EMA, just shy of 2023 highs. In addition to the New York FANG, we have the Growth and Value Index. Both of these move in higher growth outperforming as this line rises, but both growth and value are above the rising 21-day moving average, so that's a good sign. Much better than it would have been had we had a descending pattern while the broader small cap Russell 2000 remains below all of its moving averages this week, we start with bank earnings. IWM has a lot of small banks, small biotechs, and small oil and gas names that will start reporting in the short term. So it would be important to see this index bounce as well and transition back above its 200-day moving average. Breath could still see some improvement. We did back off of overbought territory plus 30%. We did see a bounce in the small caps. While advanced decline percent is starting to turn in the S&P 500 mid caps and NASDAQ in the lower panel. If we can continue to see this improvement, that black line that formed a trough two weeks ago will follow through and we could see a test of the highs with the New York Stock Exchange in the upper panel and the NICE, the summation index of all NIMO values crossing over. We'll look for that to continue and rise going into bank earnings. Though our expectations are a bit muted, we want to be cautious and yet still trade the strength that we're seeing in some of these big cap tech names, as we saw with Apple, which is on a buy signal on all time frames as can be seen with Google also breaking higher on above average volume. MACD's above its signal line and stochastics is rising going into Friday. NVIDIA and most chips followed through on the trend that started back in January as we move back above the 50 and the 200 day. All moving averages are up and to the right and volume is increasing showing institutions are accumulating shares along with the leaders like Meta in the communications sector. Nice bullish trend for the last four weeks. Bounced off the 21 day, 9, 21, 50 or above the 200 day, all pointed up and to the right. So this looks pretty good going into this week. 
Yields have all dropped last week with the exception of the three-month, the blue line pushing a bit higher, but all other yields dropping, which gives us a neutral signal on the bond stock ratio. It's just moving along the 65 period moving average, the blue line. Red line is the ratio between the 10-year and the S&P 500. That's neutral as it continues sideways. While the big news remains in the junk bond space and high-yield corporate debt, as this continues to move, it transitioned above the 65 period moving average on this weekly time frame. That's bullish for equities. As can also be seen on the daily time frame, a flag similar to what we saw on the indices, looking for that to bounce. This will mirror price action in the U.S. indexes. We have IBB turned up as well. That's bullish. IWM is trying to turn. USO crude oil did rally, so we have some issues with a headwind. With respect to crude oil prices and gasoline moving higher, if you went anywhere over the weekend, you noticed that gasoline jumped about 25 to 50 cents a gallon. We have Bitcoin hovering right around 28,000, and the advanced decline is moving higher. So that's all bullish for equities going into this week. We have the U.S. dollar showing what looks like a double bottom. It's at the lows, obviously well off of the highs. So any move lower in yields in the U.S. dollar would be a tailwind for growth stocks in particular. So if you're trading into those FANG stocks, look for these to stay weak. With the caveat in commodities, those are starting to rise. Gasoline is breaking above highs, above the 921.50 today. So this is starting to show a bullish trend. Higher highs and higher lows since December. And with a weaker dollar, of course, gold will be moving higher. It takes more dollars to buy the same amount of gold. So gold prices will shoot higher. Same with silver, which started the flag on Thursday and Friday. Look for a break higher. As commodity prices continue to show a bullish trend over the last couple of weeks. So this is the one caveat. As we can see with Brent crude, gasoline, and commodity prices moving higher along with earnings, J.P. Morgan and PNC Bank, of course, report on Friday. An additional caveat for the markets, we need to see this line moving higher. This is the ratio between consumer discretionary and consumer staples. If you're bullish, you want to see that making higher highs and higher lows like it did in January into the February peak. That said, sectors like IBB, are risky assets and whenever these are moving higher that's said to be risk on so look for IBB to continue this week real estate stocks many are expecting that to be the other shoe that drops that's holding at the 21 day nine EMA is crossing up we should see RSI continue higher if we have good reports out of the real estate industry group transports also bounced on Friday Materials are hanging in there. We've got a higher low potentially. You need to get back above the 50-day. Communication sector led by heavyweights like Meta. Looking for that to follow through. Very bullish. Look at the accumulation in volume over the last several weeks. Financials will be everything that CNBC and Bloomberg can talk about this week. Most likely Friday, of course, JP Morgan and PNC reporting. We're looking for that to get back above the 21-day. If this turns out to be resistance and we roll over, might be some good shorts in the financial sector if we get back above the 21 day and start to trend towards the 50 day after another week of earnings when Goldman and other big banks report in the following week. Maybe we can get above the 21 day. Industrials also pulled lower last week. We had John Deere and Caterpillar backing off of recent highs. Tech, of course, continues its trend higher. That's bullish. Defensive sectors hanging in there. The more sectors, the better for the S&P 500. Consumer staples making higher highs, which is also a defensive sector. Obviously, we're seeing volume accumulation, institutions positioning. Same can be said for utilities and healthcare stocks, which saw Merck and J&J &J and the pharmaceutical industry groups rally last week. AstraZeneca and AbV look for these to follow through as well. Volume suggests institutions have been accumulating shares in these three defensive sectors, while consumer discretionary is trying to hold on to the 50-day. International markets, of course, are a place to put money other than the U.S., the DAX, 
the TSX, Canada, the UK, the CAC, all moving higher. Even the EK, though it pulled back last week on Thursday, Friday, we we're making higher lows. And the India, Nifty 50, looks like it's breaking out of a descending channel. Shanghai index is trying to break higher as well, with most of the international markets showing strength. So look for a follow through in a lot of these names if you're investing money internationally. Most of these are bullish, making higher highs and higher lows, and most likely will continue to do so. Many of the stocks on the IBD 50 look set up for a follow through. We also have some stocks showing relative strength in the lower section, which would be worth your while taking a look at if we get any sort of follow through on Monday and Tuesday. Axon holding above the 21 day, looking for a follow through. Bygene with a big bounce with biotechs shooting higher on Friday. CPRX is set up nicely. We're looking for a follow through here with this inexpensive biotech trending above its 50 day. Most of the pharmaceutical names followed through as well. Volume picked up. MACD is above its signal line and Stochastics is embedded. Agilon Health, another stock from this industry and sector following through. Inexpensive, $25. Looking for a follow through this week. MACD is turning. Stochastics is moving off the lows. Cadence Design, pushing higher, 921.50 are all pointed up and to the right. Nice bullish trend, looking for this to continue, especially if semiconductors show strength. And we have NVIDIA follow that 21-day bullish trend into earnings with a bounce in Micron on Thursday and Friday pushing back above the 200-day. Look, looking for that to push higher as RSI moves back above 50. Double Verify, another stock, fairly inexpensive at 30 bucks, looking for a follow through. Look at that 921.50 or above the 200 day, starting to accelerate, volume picking up. DraftKings holding on to the 50 day, looking for it to break higher out of this descending channel. Volume picking up last week. Many of the airlines holding on to the 50 day, looking for Ryanair to continue higher. Trade Desk also pushing higher. This is in a bullish trend. Advertising along with Meta, that's their core business. Meta following through. Nice bullish trend in Meta as these stocks continue higher. Perian, Israeli company, holding on to its 90 EMA. Buyers stepped up at the low of the day, looking for a follow through. A little bit of selling on Thursday, Friday. We'll see if this continues with the advertising group seeing strength to end the week. Revence Therapeutics, fairly inexpensive name at 30 bucks. This one held up very well last week. Some of you have traded this recently. MACD is above signal line. Volume showing a bid. And Wingstop grinding higher with the most noteworthy strength in the big cap tech names like Apple following through. 921.50 above the 200 day turned up and to the right. Volume looks good. Along with Google breaking out above that 108 would be huge. Going into earnings and Microsoft all breaking higher. Okay, traders, that's going to do it for me. This is Cousin Vinny coming to you from theclosingprint.com with your weekend video newsletter for April the 9th, 2023. I'll send out a watch list later tonight around 12 o'clock on the East Coast, around 9 o'clock on the West Coast. So be sure to check your inbox for that. Otherwise, have a great weekend. Take care and we'll see you on Monday. Ciao.